Hello everyone. Today we are drilling a domestic water well. This will be a 5 inch PVC cased well, almost 400 foot deep. Got on site and got the rig set up. We've got about a 2,000 gallon pit dug to hold the drill cuttings. We're adding a couple bags of bentonite here, mostly just to seal up the pit. It will also help cut down on water losses down the hole a little bit. Uh, this isn't really enough bentonite to change the viscosity of the water much. We typically don't have too much trouble getting drill cuttings out of the hole or mud pumps big enough or a pull velocity is fast enough that we don't usually need enough or need mud for cleaning the hole. Also we try to keep the mud pretty thin so it drops the cuttings out in the pit easier and it doesn't circulate as much sand through the mud pump. In this video I'm going to be giving a step-by-step -step of what we're doing and why. If you're in the drilling industry you might pick up something to learn here a little bit. If you're a homeowner or something looking to have a well drilled, just a general overview of the process, a lot of the details probably won't really matter to you. top 20 foot of the hole we run a 9 inch bit to set a 6 and 5 eighths casing in and leave room for grout. From there down we'll run 8 inch hole and schedule 40 5 inch PVC casing. When we get all done we'll run gravel pack from the bottom of the casing up to 40 feet and then grout the top 40 feet. The water we're drilling for today is part of the Ogallala Aquifer. It's considered part of the High Plains Aquifer system. It's mostly sand and gravels and clay strips. Uh, it's not uncommon to get cemented sand or sandstone, limestone, other rock layers, uh, occasionally volcanic ash, a little bit of everything. All of this is sitting on top of a confining layer of shale and once you get to the shale, the next aquifer down in this location would probably be about 1,800 feet. So really the top aquifer is the only thing that's economical right now to develop. That aquifer is called the Dakota Aquifer. Basically up here it costs too much to drill and it's too much to pump once you do get it drilled. It just doesn't get used. Um, if you don't have any water where you're at, it's a lot cheaper to move sideways on top of the ground and hit the top aquifer and pipe the water back than it is to drill straight down for that far and pump. The Ogallala Aquifer out here in eastern Colorado and western Kansas is made up of a bunch of pools that are stair-stepped down the slope basically from west to east where we're at. Uh, most of these aren't over maybe a couple miles across. Then you'll get a layer of dry shale in between them. The shale is dammed up and that's what's holding all the water up on the slope here. There's about a thousand foot elevation drop from over a 30 mile stretch. And if it didn't have anything holding it back, all the water would have left a long time ago. The surface of the shale is uneven. It's not uncommon at all to have two locations within a thousand feet of each other be a hundred foot different on depth of shale. So you never know for sure how deep you're going to be with your hole until you get it drilled. The depth of the water can also change because you're dammed up in different pools. It's not uncommon at all to be able to go a quarter mile, jump to the other side of one of these dams and you'll have a totally different water level from what you were on first. In the areas that had enough water to do it, a lot of these bigger pools were set up with irrigation wells 
60, 70 years ago, and they've been steadily depleting the aquifer ever since. The dry areas in between them keep getting larger, and the bottom of these bowls keep getting smaller. The water level at this site has dropped about 100 feet over the last 60 years. Uh, the original house well here was not drilled all the way to shale, so that's why we ended up redrilling it. Luckily, they ended up with another 130 feet or so of water. But it's definitely been a problem out here. There's a lot of wells that have gone dry. We've got a lot of houses out here that have had to pipe water back to the place. They might have had to move a mile, up to two miles, sideways to get into a deeper part of the pool, pipe it back. If they own the ground in between there, it usually just takes money. If you don't get along with your neighbors and you don't own the ground, it can be a real challenge to get an easement to be able to have your water back for your house. Here we're pulling the nine inch bit off. It doesn't fit through the table, so we gotta take it off below it. Then we'll run in the 8 inch bit with the guide on it. We'll drill the rest of the hole. Show you the rig set up here. Just basic mud rotary. This rig's been doing it the same way for 60 years. The drill cuttings get carried up with the water, dropped into the pit, and they settle to the bottom. Got a mud mixer there, mixing a bentonite to start with. Fresh water comes into the suction side of the mud pump here. So five and a half by eight duplex mud pump. The water comes out of the top of the mud pump, up the dirt, down the Kelly hose, down through the swivel, down the drill stem. Mud pump's rated for about 300 gallons a minute and 300 pounds. If we need to, the way it's set up, it can be overstroked a little bit and make about 350 gallons a minute. We don't usually run it that fast, so. All the power that comes off the truck engine comes through this chain case power divider. On this side we've got a clutch for the hydraulic pump and then on the top left is an output shaft that could be used to drive the mud pump if you didn't have a deck engine. The top center is a draw works clutch and drive line to the draw works. You can also see the rotary swivel which allows water connection from the drill hose down into the top of the Kelly and down into the drill pipe. On the back of the chain case, there's a large spinning ball that is a bare hydraulic. It allows for a consistent pull down if you're using pull down chains. The bottom center drive line goes through a three speed transmission and then hits the rotary table, which drives the Kelly and drives the drill string and bit from there. Here's another view of the back of the chain case since I didn't stop there very long on the video. Pretty much everything on this rig is done with mechanical clutches, drive lines, 
handbrakes. The hydraulics are used to level it for the jacks and to raise the mast. But other than that, everything else is all mechanical. The rig is a 1956 model, so they don't, didn't have all the modern day hydraulics that we have available on rigs now. A lot of the operation on this is done more by feel than it is by gauges. Uh, we've got a pressure gauge on the mud pump and a RPM gauge to tell us how fast we're driving the mud pump. Other than that, everything else is just getting used to the rig and knowing what you're doing. When we get to the bottom of the drill stem, we like to trip it up and down once in the hole. But just make sure that we don't have any big rocks or anything left behind in the hole. Also, make sure you don't have any ledges if you've been drilling through rocks. Could have knocked the bit sideways. Those can create a problem with getting the casing in later, but not so much right now. And that also gives you something to do while you're waiting for the cuttings to come up. We log every stem once we figure out for sure what we was drilling in. And then when we get to the tail end of the cuttings, we're ready to make a connection. Adding pipes pretty much the same on any Kelly drive rig. You pull the Kelly out, set the slips, and use a table or breakout tongs or whatever system the rig has to unscrew the connection. And you set the Kelly aside and screw the next joint of pipe on. Set it down into the hole you just got done drilling. Then screw the Kelly back on. Pick it up and start the mud pump. We like to add a little bit of air into the line at this time. Just took a quarter inch airline off the truck, tie it into the top of the air thump. That way when we make the next connection it gives uh, Kelly a little shot of air to drain it down. It's pretty well dry whenever you're unscrewing it. Set it back into the table and you're back to drilling. We'll pick up the second drill stem, well, the next drill stem, with the secondary line, get it doped up and ready to do it again. We're drilling in sandy clay here. The gravel that's in it is what makes the bit chatter quite a bit. Basically, the more it's chatter and the bigger the size of rocks you're drilling. If it's cutting real smooth, you're in either clay or shale or something of that nature. We're not adding any additional weight on the bit here. We're not using pull down chains any. We've probably got about a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred pounds. It's pretty well fallen into it, pretty easy, it's pretty loose. But if it was straight sand and gravel, you'd probably be making twice the penetration rate as what you are right now. The bottom three or four feet of this stem got a little bit tighter still sandy clay but it's just not drilling quite as quick. The next stem we went ahead and added a little bit of pull down just to keep the penetration rate up. When you're this close to the bottom you need a little bit of time to circulate the cuttings out anyway so there's not much need to run the pull down chains for just a couple feet.
from here we just keep drilling till we get down to shale go through several different layers of sand and clay and gravel in this hole once we get down to shale we like to flush it out with chlorinated water get all the mud out of the hole before we set our casing and then we'll set the casing do the same thing flush it again with chlorinated water and then run our gravel in through that we'll talk a little bit about developing wells here there's probably as many ways to develop a well as there is to drill a well one's not necessarily better than another just depends on what your goals are for the development what method you use to drill it uh, a little bit of experience on past holes what you need to do to end up with a decent well like everything else there's a balance between how much time and money you spend on the hole and how much gain or return you get back out of it if in our case most of our wells develop relatively easily we're in areas that are capable of producing a lot more water than what we need so we really don't need to spend an excessive amount of time trying to improve something that you might gain a couple feet of drawdown. The biggest thing we do to develop is actually to precondition the hole with flushing the water through it. Other than that, we drop our test pump in it, which is just a submergible pump, and over pump the aquifer a little bit, which does clean out some of the sand and pines, but mostly it's just getting the water clear. There's really not a lot, a lot of actual development goes on when you're just over pumping. On this particular well, we ended up with the bottom of the hole being 387 feet. The static water level was 256 feet. The pumping water level was 259. So we're only drawing down three feet, pumping 25 gallons a minute. There's really nothing else we need to do to try to improve that because there's hardly anything to gain. So. We're down to the bottom of the hole now. We're we circulated until we got all the cuttings out of the hole. Now we're flushing it with the fresh water. We started out with the pit about empty, but our pump coming out of the pit isn't putting out near what the mud pump does. So we're out running it a little bit. When the fresh water comes up, you'll be able to see the difference. It'll start floating across the top of the pit and be quite a bit clearer than what the mud is that we're flushing out of the hole. Got the casing stage there, ready to run in after we get done flushing this. We'll pull the drill stem and set the casing. Here we've got the casing set in the hole. We're back flushing it just like we did the drill stem. Leaves nice clean water on the inside, flushes the perf off, and leaves chlorinated water on the outside to set the gravel in. We've got about three yards of gravel pack in the dump box here. It's roughly quarter to three eighths inch size. We've usually set a sixteen thousandths perf seems to be a good combination for us. It does good at keeping the fine sand out of the well. Clears up nice. Generally within an hour or two when we start test pumping it, it's cleaned up good enough to drink. So I'm sure every area and every driller has their own ways of doing things. When you find something that works, you stick with it. We run gravel pack from the 
bottom of the well up to the base of the grout level, which in this case is 40 feet. It'll end up taking almost all of the three yards we brought along. Also run a tag line on top, just a tape measure with the weight on it. When the gravel starts getting up to there, you can feel it hitting bottom, just jogging it up and down. So that's how you know when you're getting close enough, you shut it off and then top it off. Get it up to the level you need for your grout. And that's what we ended up with left over. Here we're starting to run our test pump down the hole. We've got a three horse electric submergible 18 gallon a minute pump on 500 foot of hose. Run the wires up through the hose. It takes about 15 minutes to run down to the 400 foot level where we're at with this well, but it beats screwing pipe together. Our water truck in the background there holds 3,000 gallons, it's split into three different tanks. We can chlorinate either 500, 1,000, or 1,500 gallons, depending on how much we need for the well. Here we're mixing the neat cement grout for the top of the hole. We started out with eight bags, and then we ended up topping it off with another four bags. Mixer could probably hold 10, and 10 probably would have done it on this well. We used to use the 10 inch bit on top, and we just switched over to the 9 inch bit. So we ended up having a couple extra bags than what we would have needed to fill the hole. Now we're ready to pump it down the hole. Our grout pump is set up where it only makes about 200 pounds. They're capable of making six or 800 pounds. We're running it through a three quarter PEX pipe so we don't need that much pressure on that pipe. As the grout comes up past the bottom of the steel casing, which is set 19 feet, we'll be able to see the water it's displacing above it come over the top of the steel. That lets you know that you're getting grout in between the two casings and also gives you a pretty good idea of how much more grout you need to mix if you didn't make it all the way up on the first batch. When we get good cement coming out shovel the end of the trench in just save a little bit there and keep it for a reservoir. That way if the grout settles back a little bit, you've still got some in reserve there. I took a couple pictures when we came back to complete the well. The grout did settle back a little bit, but we still had good grout down where we needed it. The, we're going to set the pitless there at about four foot deep. While we've got the test pump running, we measure the pumping water level. In this case, it ended up being three foot below the static water level. We're pretty well cleared up, good enough that it's not going to hurt the customer's pump any. It's still a little bit cloudy, but there's no sand left in it anymore. When we came back, we abandoned the well in the pit, got it all replumbed and rewired, piped from the new well, plumbed back over to the pit. We had the water running for about an hour and got cleaned up good enough to drink. So.
course you always end up with extra material when you take the dirt out of the hole you're going to have some leftovers. Get it dressed up, get everything loaded up and we're done with the field work. Then there's forms to send to the state and bill to get ready for the customer.